Just because a house is tiny doesn't mean that it can't have a really big heart. And that's exactly the case with this next wonderful home that we're about to visit that's absolutely packed with wonderful salvaged materials and charming artistic features. Hi Matilda, lovely to meet you. Hi Bryce, nice to meet you too. And I am very excited to see your beautiful home. Oh, thank you. We'll have a good look at it. <laughs> Absolutely. So first of all, can you tell me how it was that you actually came to be living in a tiny house? Yeah, I've never lived in big houses before. Um, I've lived in different countries, but always in quite small houses. And I think it's a waste of land, material and money to build really big houses. We don't need big houses. I used to live in a house bus by myself, so I'm used to a small space. And I learned from the house bus what I didn't want in the tiny house and what I did want in the tiny house, so I went from there with the design as well. So a small house is more than big enough for me and I can take it with me. And um, yeah, I think it's big enough for me and my dogs. So yeah. And I see you've got all this really interesting agility equipment out here. Can you tell me what's going on here? Uh, well, I've got three dogs, three rescue dogs, all small, and two of them do competitive agility. Uh, I love doing that. I used to have a, a Kelpie that I did it with when I came to New Zealand. I brought her with me from Sweden. Uh, she was one year old and we competed for about 10 years until she died about two years ago. And now oh. I've got these three little ones and two uh, are quite good at it. And they do it competitively, so yeah. Very cool. Yeah. And your home is absolutely beautiful. Can you tell me a little bit about the design? Well, it's just a basic um, wooden frame design, really. Uh, I designed it myself with just pen and paper, a pencil and paper and an eraser. And um, it took about a year for me to uh, really get convinced that I wanted to get rid of the bus and wanted to spend the money uh, on the tiny house. And then I found somebody who um, wanted to build it for me. He was really open to me designing it. Um, I managed to get a lot of the materials secondhand, uh, apart from the cladding, of course, because the cladding is vinyl. Uh, I didn't want it to be too heavy, and I definitely wanted something uh, cladding that was free of maintenance. That's why I got the vinyl cladding, and I'm really pleased that I did that. Just wash it, and that's it. Nothing else, no painting, nothing. And so what size is the tiny house? It's 7 meters 60 by 240. And I see over the other side of the tiny house, you've got a matching smaller trailer. Can you talk to me about that? <laughs> yeah, it's a little camping trailer. Uh, when I go to my competitions with the dogs, uh, most of us camp because it's often two days, Saturday and Sunday, and we go quite far, like to Taupo or Tauranga. So uh, I had that built by the same guy, a lovely guy who built my tiny house. And I said, can you build me a little camping trailer, like a little rustic little thing that looks like a tiny house? And he said, yep. So I had the trailer, the actual trailer built by somebody else and he did the rest. Well, I absolutely love what you've done with the exterior of this house. I think it is way too cute that you've got a matching, even smaller tiny house adjoined <laughs> to it. And I cannot wait to see the inside of this one. Can we take a look? Yes, let's go. Thank you very much, after you. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> Thank you. Immediately stepping inside this home, it just has this incredible warm and homey feeling, doesn't yeah. it? That is something that's really important to me. I don't like sterile. I don't like all white. Um, when I see these programs on TV where they're doing up houses and the kitchens are black and the walls are white and the floors are white tiles and I do not like that. I like rustic and I like warm. It needs to be me. It needs to be something that, that I feel good in. And I don't feel good in something that looks sterile or too industrial to me. It's fine and other people like it. I don't. So, I completely understand. Yeah. Yeah. And in here, you can certainly see a tremendous amount of your character coming through with <laughs> all of this lovely artwork. Yeah. I really like native New Zealand birds. I also like supporting uh, people from New Zealand who do creative things. I'm quite creative myself and I really appreciate that in other people. Uh, I don't paint, I can't paint. And when I see what people do, I find this absolutely amazing. And because I love birds, they're pretty much all birds. And uh, like, this is amazing, isn't it? That's, those are turkey feathers. Really? Yeah. Those are beautiful. Yeah. 
And this, these three are made by a friend. Yeah, I really like having stuff that people made that I know. So, yeah. It's like having your friends inside your home with you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My boss made my LED light window that's in the tiny house. That's just yeah. so special. It's absolutely isn't it? amazing. I absolutely love that window. Wow. And it really yeah. does just bring so much character into the room, it does. doesn't it? It's beautiful. I love it. Just lovely. Yeah. And your lounge over here, this just looks like the coziest space. Yeah, well, it's exactly how I want it. Um, I know most tiny houses have big setups that can sit like seven or eight people. Um, I socialize outside the house. So I knew that when I built this tiny house. So I decided that I didn't need anything like that. I just wanted one chair, a really comfy chair for me, three or four dog beds, uh, my books, my photos, uh, a TV, uh, some nice things around me that I've collected over my life and that I really like to have around me. Other people might call it clutter. Um, I love it. And of course, having the wood fire here just really completes that cozy ambience in the lounge, doesn't it? Yeah, I wouldn't be without a fire. Absolutely love it. I love seeing it as well. So I'm not a pot belly type person without glass. I want to see the fire. So this is exactly the one that I wanted. And it looks like really unique blinds that you've chosen for this house as well. Yeah, I used to have uh, normal single layer blinds and because I'm not double glazed, I found that it was a little bit cold and I thought these honeycomb blinds, I'd read about them and because they're little cells, they trap air inside. The cold just stays behind it, you don't feel it at all. So I do feel a difference. And then I see up here you've got a clothes drying contraption as well. Yeah, that's right. I made that myself as well. Um, I just bought that. It's actually from one of these children play pens, uh, one of the sides. Ah. And somebody was selling that on Facebook for $10. So I bought that and put the ropes on and the clips and the little chain and hold it up. And when I need it, I take the little chain off and it comes down and I put my clothes on there. Very clever yeah. idea. Yeah. And then over here we have your kitchen, and I love all of the timber in here. Um, yeah, it's all recycled Rimu. Uh, I bought um, somebody's kitchen off Trade Me, um, the doors, because the cabinets had fallen apart. And my builder had to change some of the doors to fit them uh, exactly to how I wanted the kitchen. And he had never uh, built a kitchen before. My tiny house was his first actual tiny house, because he used to be a cabin builder. Right. Uh, under 10 square meter cabins. And I got him to build me my tiny tiny house and, and he said are you just going to buy a, a kitchen at Bunnings? I said no. I said you just build me a frame and uh, make me some drawers and, uh, and hang the doors and, uh, and I'll get a sink and the kitchen top and I'll tell you how big I want it and that's what he did. Set him yeah. a challenge, I so, like it. Well that's right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> my splash bags, I made them myself. Um, a friend of mine does paint pouring um, so I got some acrylic sheet that I got given and cut it to size and went to see her and chose my colors and made it with her help. So yeah, I'm very happy with that as well. I can yeah. see why, they yeah. are lovely. And how yeah. incredible that you've done it yourself. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I've added a few things that, that I did myself. And it certainly looks like you've built in all of the essentials here. Yeah, I've got everything. I've got a microwave, I've got a very good oven air fryer. Um, I've got a gas oven as well that I don't really like very much. It's originally one of these boat um, uh, ovens right. and it only has a little strip of gas at the bottom and I have to keep turning everything around so when I'm baking it bakes uneven. So I didn't like it very much. I do use the gas burners but not the oven and since I have that I don't use it at all anymore. I've got a lot of prep space, it's big enough for me, I've got a lot of storage, uh, good drawers, good fridge with freezer. I just wanted lots of storage in my kitchen and I've got more than enough. And I particularly like this. Ah, when look I at that. The bathroom door. So yeah, all these jars with everything that I want, everything that I need. I eat a lot of nuts and seeds and dried fruit and yeah, really like that. Wonderfully hidden back there. Yeah. And then of course behind the door there is your bathroom. Yes, indeed. Let's take a look. <laughs> okay. Oh, this is very sweet. I love the mirror there. <laughs> yeah, that's another one that I did. And I made the shelves in there and made the composting toilet myself. I right. made the box myself. It's just a simple bucket system, but with a separator. 
Right. And um, on the left hand side, there's a couple of um, plastic trays that can hold the sawdust and stuff. Nice shower over here yeah, as well. Yeah, the shower is, um, uh, for me, um, I'm not even 60 kilos, so I fit in it very well. And the pressure is really good. I've got a very good um, caliphant and pump system. I used to have a um, not so great shower in my house bus. It was one of these built-in little things stuck out of the wall, and that wasn't great. And this is fantastic compared to that. It's really good. And then upstairs we have your sleeping loft. Yes. After you. So obviously there's no standing height, so you have to sit on the bed straight away. But I really like the space. It's really nice and cozy and warm. And so yeah, my wardrobe was built by somebody who makes furniture for tiny houses. And I knew exactly how I wanted it. So he built it for me and then he came and put it in here really, really nice. He was so nice. And I painted it. Beautiful. So yeah, it's fantastic. And the doors are great. You can just pull them out. It's bifold. So yeah, really nice. Yeah. And I see you've got a TV up here as well. Yes, I've got a TV here up here as well because I really like going to bed a bit early and then watch TV in bed with the dogs on the bed. The dogs sleep on the bed with me, which I really like. The little one actually sleeps under the duvet in winter. Aww. She just, she's so funny because she um, actually pushes her nose under the duvet. If I don't lift it up, she pushes her nose under. Lift it up, mum, I want to get under. So <laughs> she's really funny. Oh, that's so, so cute. Yeah, I love having my dogs on the bed. Yeah. yeah. So you've been living in the house now for about four years. Yeah. How are you finding life here? Yeah, I love it. It's great. The house is what I wanted. Um, I'm totally happy. And the spot is, of course, fantastic. So rural and so close to everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. This house for me is something to go home to from work, to go home to from weekends away, come back in and open the door and go, oh yes, this is my house and all my things around me. Yeah, that's it. It's just me and the dogs and I'm happy like that. And can you tell me a little bit about the cost that was involved in building this home? Um, I managed to source a lot of uh, the materials myself. So I gave the trailer to the builder and all the things that I had bought and he built the whole thing. I paid him 45,000 and with everything that I bought, including the trailer, it probably cost me about 65. Wow. That's about it. That really is such an incredible price. And what I love about it as well is that not only did you get all of the cost-saving benefits of sourcing so many second-hand materials, you've also got all of the benefits of bringing all of this beautiful timber and history into the home as well. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that's really important for me. Yeah, I really wanted to do that. I really wanted to try and use materials that were upcyclable and especially the timber. I love the timber. Yeah. yeah. Matilda, you really have built such a beautiful, warm, welcoming home for yourself here. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing it with me. You're most welcome. Thanks for coming. Matilda really has done such a wonderful job in crafting a truly charming, warm and welcoming home for herself here. I love all of the timber, I love all of the history and reclaimed salvage elements that have gone into this build. You can tell that this really is the perfect place for her and her dogs.